All right, I got Sam and Jackie. Sam's 50, Jackie's 42, and they're asking the question, when can we retire? We have $275,000 in retirement investments and retirement savings. We're maxing out our 401ks and our Roth IRAs. When can we retire? Well, let's look at that right now and let's get them to retirement. All right, so I've got Sam and I've got Jackie. They live in the great state of Minnesota. They're in Minnesota. Uh, Sam's current gross monthly salary is $8,750. Jackie's current gross monthly salary is $5,833. So Sam makes $105,000 a year and Jackie's just below $70,000 a year. Now, we want to both of them look at retiring at 62. Now, Sam is eight years older, so Jackie's going to work an additional eight years, but we want to get them both to age 62 for retirement. So Sam will retire first, and then Jackie will retire at 62. Now, current Social Security benefits, I've got them both taking Social Security at 67. Now, keep in mind, they're going to be well beyond the year 2033 when they take Social Security benefits. The current projections for Social Security at the year 2033 is only being able to pay about 75 to 80 percent of benefits. Now, that's because Congress continues to keep, kick the can down the road. Will that continue? That's anyone's guess. So what we can do on the projections is just go with what we know, and that is assuming that Social Security will be there when Sam and Jackie claim. Now, we're claiming at 67, which is 100% of their full retirement benefit. If we wait to 70 on either of them, they'll get 124% of their full retirement benefit. If we claim earlier, 62, 63, 64, 65, or 66, they'll get a reduced benefit of their full retirement benefit. So, if Sam claims Social Security at 62, he'll get 70% of his full retirement benefit. And then every year after that, up into age 67, it's still a reduced benefit. It's just higher than the initial 70%. So we're going to look at taking Social Security at 67. So for Sam at 67, it would be 2,829. And for Jackie, it would be 2,086. Now, Sam and Jackie are unique because they have this old school thing called a pension. I don't know how many of you guys have a pension, but they get a pension, which is unusual in today's economic and financial world. So Sam gets a pension starting at 62 of $982 a month. Jackie also gets a pension at 62 of $279 a month, and it does not have a COLA increase. So there's no COLA increases on these pensions. So that 982 and that 279 are static figures. So we've got a little over $1,100 that is static for the rest of their retirement or as long as they are living. Now, from an asset standpoint, they've got $8,000 in the bank. Now, this is low for their emergency fund. So they're trying to build up their emergency fund. They're putting in $500 a month into the bank to build up their emergency fund. Now listen, for an emergency fund standpoint, if you're younger and you've got two individuals working, you want at least three to six months of your monthly expenses in an emergency fund. If you are single, you want at least six months six months minimum savings in an emergency fund. Now, an emergency fund can be in a bank, can be in a CD, it can be in a money market account. We just want it in accounts that will not fluctuate with the market, okay? Now, Sam's 401k, he has $215,000 in his 401k. He's putting in $2,275. Now, the match is in there as well, so he's putting his contribution in plus the match, which totals $2,275 a month. Sam has a Roth IRA of $7,360, of which he's putting $625 in. Now, Sam is 50, so he can put in the catch-up contribution 
into his Roth IRA, which is what he is doing. If you're under the age of 50, you're only allowed to put in a certain amount of money. If you're over the age of 50, the government allows you to put a catch-up contribution in. Now, depending on what year you're watching this video, the contributions and the catch-up contributions can change. Just Google or go to my YouTube page, 2022, 2023, 401k and IRA contributions. Now, in their joint account, they've got $7,426. This is a taxable brokerage account. They're not investing anything into that. They just kind of put in as needed or as they have some extra money. Now, Jackie has a Roth IRA, which she's putting $541 in a month. And Jackie has a simple IRA at work. $26,400 of which she's putting in $257 a month. That's her match or her contribution plus the company's 3% match. And then Sam has a Thrivent Roth IRA of $6,625. So a total uh, retirement savings at this point of $274,147. Almost $275,000. So the question becomes, when can we retire? So let's skip to that and then we'll come back to some of the details. So the first thing I always like to look at when we're doing a under 50 or someone who's got five, seven, 10 years before they retire is I like to come to this pre-retirement tab and I wanna know based on just current assumptions, current contributions, current matches, how much are you gonna have in retirement savings when you get to such and such age? So for them, we're at $274,000 at 51 and 42. We've got a $400,000 house that's going to appreciate by 1.5% every year. The money in the market, we're just going to give it a 6% rate of return. So I'll show you how that works. So let's go to the year 2022. Well, actually, let's go to 2023. Let's get a full year in here. So we've got 2023. Here's our gross monthly salary for January. So $14,758. Here's our contributions, $4,198. As you can see, $500 in the bank. 2275 into the 401k, 625 into Roth, 541 into Roth, and 257 into simple IRA. Monthly cash flows, annual cash flow, there's no added expenses coming out except for the normal expenses. So net monthly income is $6,846. That's salary, contributions, and taxes. $6,157 is our net monthly expenses, meaning $689 is what's left over at the end of the month, meaning now we have $303,945. So we were at $275 in 2022, January of 2023, earning 6% a year in the market. We're up to $303,945. So we're looking at this on a monthly basis. We really want to get into the details because we want to know as close as we can, when can we retire? So let's go down and let's see. So Sam's gonna retire at 62. So at 62, now remember his wife is eight months, or I'm sorry, eight years younger. Jackie's eight years younger. So she's gonna keep working. So our income's gonna drop from 16,500 down to 5,833. That's Jackie's income, right? So. Uh, Sam's is going to go away. Jackie's is going to stay. So he, so we're going to see the monthly contributions go down, right? So we've gone down from 4,198 to 1298. Now we're also going to see a little bit of a jump in cash flow, money coming out, because now that Sam has his income has gone away, we got to use our retirement assets to live off of. So 5,082 has got to come out of the retirement portfolio for them to live. Now they've saved $1.4 million. So Sam 62, we've got $1.4 million. Jackie's going to work for another nine years. So for another nine years, she's 62, Sam 71. Now we've got $2 million, which is really good. So we kind of have a good idea that when Sam retires, we need at least 
$1.4 million. That's out of our line in the sand. 1.4 is what we need. When Jackie decides to retire at 62, we'll have essentially $2 million. Based on just their current contributions, current matches, current Roth IRAs, and current symbols. I'm not calculating any salary increases, any bonuses. I'm not calculating any inheritance. So for them, this is a very, very, very conservative way to look at things. So now we know at both of theirs full retirement, 71 and 62, we'll have $2 million. Now, our expenses, we did a Current monthly, we did an advanced expense plan, so they listed out their expenses for me in an from an advanced standpoint because I wanted to look at, they still have a mortgage of 1600 When is that going away? Well, that's going away in 2035. So we can take that off of our expenses because we're gonna be well into retirement and Social Security's at that level. I want those expenses to come down. So our expenses right now, $6,108 and we've got a 3.24% inflation rate. Now taxes, let's go to 2033. So current taxes, 14.21 is the federal tax rate, which is pretty good for people making $180,000. Your effective tax rate is 14.21. A lot of that has to do with their contributions that they're making, the 28,109 and the 25,900, the high Trump era standard deduction, which is really good for them. Now their projected state rate, 7.46 for the state of Minnesota. So they got the two rates that we've got to look at there. So let's go to retirement. Let's see if they retire at 71 and 62 with $2 million, will they have enough for the rest of their life? Well, if you just kind of do a simple scroll, I'd say a 99 for Sam and 90 for Jackie having about $3.3 million. They're in a really good place. So what I want to encourage you, let's go back to assets real quick. Look, they are 50 and 42. Okay, we've got $274,000. We're assuming 5.82% or 6% rate of return. They're maxing 401ks, Roth IRAs, simple IRAs. They're doing what they need to do. And essentially, the legacy to their children is about $3 million. So it doesn't matter where you're at today, just start. Save invest and contribute. Just start. I hope this has helped. God bless. Bye-bye.